to another studio vlog. If you don't know me, my name is Tammy. I'm a clay artist, but I also go by uncomfy because your girl's anxious. But I try to make cozy art to make others feel comfortable. I haven't done a studio vlog in a while, so I wanted to start off fresh on a Monday to show you the full breadth of what I do as a part-time artist and part-time art student. Currently, I'm a digital design major working on my thesis, so I do a lot of work for that, but I also have a lot of orders to get out for my shop as well. Last month I did a little harvest cat launch which went really well which I'm so grateful for but I have a lot of pre-orders to get out this Friday. I have about 40 or 50 orders to get out so I'm trying to split the work. I'm gonna try to ship out one batch of cats on Wednesday and the other batch on Friday. So I started a lot of sculpting yesterday over the weekend so I'll show you what I have done so far but yeah it's gonna be a busy week as always. Also, I'm gonna start sculpting, but if you have any questions on the supplies or materials that I'm using throughout this video, make sure to watch this video or go to my Amazon storefront, link is down below. I do make a commission, but these are genuinely all the supplies that I use, so if you wanted to use them too, that'd be great. So this is everything I made yesterday. I made 11 of the orange harvest cats. I still have like 30 more total to make. Look at what my boyfriend made. This was his attempt at making a radish. Okay, so I finished all of the bodies and now I'm on to the very last step of these orange cats which is to add the corn and also the tail on the back but that's super easy. <laughs> yeah. Like I pour wine work, it's just like there's gaps everywhere. There's not gaps in Rhino, I promise. Like. So you just have to fix it manually? Yeah, and I'm like, well then what the f was the point? so hard. <laughs> 
ignore the lawnmower in the back. I'm looking pretty rough because I had an unexpectedly rough night. Um, sometimes things just don't go to plan and I ended up not being able to sleep. So I stayed up doing homework to try to get myself to sleep more, but I ended up just staying up till like 2 or 3 a.m. And I didn't even finish all of the homework that was due today, so that was just how last night went. But today's a new day. Um, I didn't go to class because I wasn't feeling up to it, which makes me feel horrible because I know school is a privilege, but I couldn't even get out of bed until well after the class started, so I, it, I just wouldn't have made it. Today, I'm just gonna focus on my mental health, and ironically, that means working for me. I'm gonna make all the white cats that I have to make. So that's 13 white cats that I'm gonna make today. I'm just gonna chill, sculpt, watch Gilmore Girls, and just like heal my body. I just fixed it with a really weird little snare. Uh, So if you saw my last video about all the supplies I used, I said I use this food scale a lot. It weighs everything to the gram, which I really love because I can get sort of neurotic about everything being very consistent. The first step in making 50 harvest cats is to weigh everything out. So their bodies are five grams and their heads are three grams. So I'm just doing that for 13 of them now. Heads, bellies. The hairstyles alone prove the Fairly Brothers are not making this stuff up. Rusty red okay. on her shoulder. I was cleaning her shoe when it clicked on the trot over. We brushed and we braided dandelions and chewed. 
so I finally finished painting everything. So many cats and some fish. I don't want to glaze these quite yet just because it'll take another two hours of me sitting and concentrating. Um, so I'm taking a little break, but I just went down to the mail room and got this. I'm really excited. Look, it's a picture of my studio. <laughs> I got new thank you cards, 500 of them to be exact. I'm pretty bummed that the colors are a little different because on my computer it was like a lot more legible, but I mean the main focus is on the picture anyway, so I'm glad that this looks pretty. And then the back is still the same as my old ones. But yeah, I wanted to change some things up because I've had these little illustrative thank you cards for the longest time and I figured I freaking love this photo of my studio so much and it did really well on social media so I just wanted to like make a print of it. <laughs> so now these will be the new thank you cards for Uncomfy Co for a while. these stickers that match the harvest cat colors because I really didn't need to but I just wanted to <laughs> so now I'm just stickering them and then I think I'm gonna wait for Mr. Uncomfy to come back so he can help me pack everything but in the meantime I'm just gonna get everything ready and then probably gonna start sculpting the second batch of orders that I want to ship out stickered. <laughs> okay. Now I'm on to the white cat stickers. I'm just taping, oops, I'm just taping down the corners here because the mat that's supposed to be sticky isn't sticky anymore because I've had this bitch for like two years now. And now she's finally ready to cut. Hello, it's the packing orders portion of this video, which means it's time for another Q&A. I asked you to ask me questions on Instagram or the YouTube community tab, and I received over like 70 questions, which is crazy. Obviously, I won't be able to get to them all, but I'm thinking of making a whole video dedicated to answering your questions. So let me know in the comments if that's what you want. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. So the first question I have here is, how did you feel when you first started your business and what were your mistakes? Oh boy, so when I first started my business in 2020, I actually started it with my best friend at the time. So to me, it was just like a fun project that I was doing with my friend on the side. I had a design job at the time, so it was not my main source of income by any means. It was a passion project. We just wanted to make art together and make some cash while we're at it. So that was my mindset at the time. But then a couple months in, I ended up running the business by myself. And by that point, we had accumulated about a thousand or so followers. So I was like, I'm just, I'm just gonna keep rolling with this. I really think that I can make this work. So, so I guess to answer your questions, it was feelings of passion and excitement. I wasn't really afraid of anything. I think that's a really good trait that I had when starting my business is that I wasn't afraid of anything. I wasn't afraid of failure. I wasn't afraid of people seeing what I was doing. Um, to me, those are all very inhibiting feelings that you just shouldn't feel when you're doing something from your heart. You know, you should just be excited to do it. But my biggest mistake by far 
was pricing my items way too cheap. I was only accounting for materials, not even time because I miscalculated how much time it would take me not only to sculpt every keychain, but to spend time on social media posting, to maintain my website, to make videos, and to pack everything. Packing orders takes up about, I would say, a good third of the time. So taking that all into account, plus adding value. And this goes into another question that someone asked me, which was, what is your pricing strategy? Nowadays, what goes into my pricing is not just time and materials, but it's the value. The value of my art, my heart and soul that goes into each and every piece, that's how I price my things. Like everything is handmade, it's one of a kind, and my customers who buy from me know that. Like they're not just buying a keychain, they're buying my livelihood, they're supporting me, they're purchasing something that will help me as an artist. And it's the value of my story, the message that I put in every piece. So yeah, I hope that helps and I hope that makes sense. The next few questions are related to social media and I thought it was important to talk about this especially because social media I think is super important like without it I wouldn't have a business. So someone asked how do you overcome social media anxiety? I will just give you the short and sweet answer which is to use numbers and use analytics as a tool to get better and don't use it as a tool to measure your value. Your likes and your followers are only a metric to help you grow so I hope that helps get rid of some anxiety. Nobody cares how many likes you have except for you so take that fear away from you and what something that helps me is like sometimes if a post isn't doing well sometimes it gets to me so on instagram you can turn off the function that shows you how many likes so instead of a number of likes it shows liked by this person and others instead of the number if that gives you anxiety and yeah just have fun with it i know it sounds cheesy but social media is a ton of negative things but one positive thing is that you can get your work out there and talk to new people who like creating things just as much as you do but yeah of course I understand as an anxious person myself, sometimes I do need to step away from social media. Like I'm never on social media anymore for my personal account and I'm only on there to post and maintain my business. I never really scroll anymore except on TikTok and that's just for entertainment. Another question I got was like, how do you not become so stressed while managing a business, school, social life, partner, family, etc.? And the answer that I have to that is you, you definitely do become stressed and I definitely don't know the answer to this still. To be honest, I do have a hard time a lot of the time and, and I do slack in my studies. I don't prioritize school as much as I prioritize my business, which to some people may sound bad, but to me, my art is my career and it will always be my main focus. And in the end, running my own business will be the biggest asset that I have to put on a resume should I choose to get a 9 to 5 job in the future. But honestly, I just prioritize sleeping a lot. I feel like that helps me lower my stress levels and I try to really just like appreciate the small moments I do have with my family. I love eating dinner with my roommates and my partner, like that's our sacred time. And yeah, so doing those little things helps me separate my work from my personal life just a little bit more. But yeah, thank you so much for listening to this q and I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, so this is everything I made for the second shipment. Um, way less cats, but a lot more miscellaneous stuff. So as you can see, I've sorted them out into little piles because I have different stickers for different things. So, so you saw me make the Harvest Cat stickers. I already have Maxine stickers. And then the rest of these guys just get normal Uncomfy Co. Radish stickers on their packaging. But I wanted to show you I made the tiniest like chubby cat keycap. So we're gonna test this on my keyboard to see if it works.
I also made these custom fruit cats. I'm really happy with how they turned out, especially this gray one with the strawberry.